All right, today we're going to spin up just uh, basically a toy. Um, we're going to make a basically a spin handle nut for the uh, vice jaw. Uh, more or less just to test out the tooling. Uh, this is being drip, drip feed from the uh, DNC controller. The program's too big to actually fit in the uh, FANUC. Uh, I'm going to let this thing go and see what happens. Yeah, this is kind of hard, hard to see, and I basically stopped the machine. Um, but on this part, we just finished a real quick spot drill, and I wanted to check it. I actually, it was so uh, small, the pattern, that I really couldn't see. So I, I actually stopped it after that operation and kind of wiped the coolant off just to, so I could make sure that uh, I was actually getting a, a spot drill. And it looks good. Okay, this part's run and I noticed the issue um, before I unclamped it basically I wanted to measure make sure that this uh, uh, this would actually fit on the vice end and I made some error somewhere in Fusion 360 um, and actually made, ended up making it too small it ended up being about 0.665 and it should have been closer to like 0.775 um, and sure enough I measured between the two parts on the, uh, the poly and it was uh it came out to exactly what fusion 360 was programmed not really sure that how that happened anyway i, got, I had to spend i don't know it took me an hour or so to figure out actually how to edit a polygon so i keep all my holes and everything um, i ended up figuring that out and now i've got a short version of the program i'm going to run this real quick and make sure we get that inside opening the correct size
Okay, we got our part machined and we got it the right diameter this time. Um, as you can see, basically it's just, we're using a uh, eighth inch drill to drill these holes here uh, so that we can get uh, the corners out without putting in a smaller end mill. Uh, I could have done a, a smaller end mill, but I really like this method of doing uh, jaws. It gives a place for, if you get little chips or something, it gives a place for it to go into rather than the part not sliding on. Um, but here's how it fits. It's really easy to get on, really easy to turn. And when we get done, you can basically take your hand and just really spin that really fast. Okay, so we're gonna go do the second op on this. Um, I did have a failure uh, on the very first one of these that I machined. Uh, basically, we had a, I actually had a drill bit break uh, in here, and that was after we found out that the diameter of this, uh, this poly wasn't correct. Um, I'm really not sure what happened. Uh, I did change this to do full retracts. Um, even though with the depth of cut that I'm doing it, it normally doesn't require it. But I'll get this back in the vise and we'll flip it over and do the do the other operation. Okay, here goes the back operation. And hopefully we'll have a functional part. Okay, minor crash. Uh, this is the end result. Basically, it destroyed this face mill. Um, luckily, these aren't too expensive. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have another one. Um, I did go ahead and finish the part. I finished it out on the lathe. Basically, just took and turned this side and chamfered that corner uh, and this works really good it works really good on the vise the vise if you notice is off now um, the crash did offset the vise it actually moved it just a couple of uh, tents so I went ahead and took it off um, no real damage other than the face mill and the jaw this is pretty much the damage um, I could probably reuse this jaw uh, but I probably won't because it's got some sharp edges on it and I really don't want to remachine this. Um, but anyway, that's the damage. The machine's fine. I've checked out the spindle run out and checked the table. Uh, basically, it detected the overload as it was coming down and stopped, uh, which is really good. I've been racking my brain now for a while trying to figure out what actually happened and I finally found it. I, I initially thought that I did the work offset error in Fusion. Uh, but let me show you what I actually found. I'm surprised this is the first time this has happened, but uh, after looking at Fusion, I, I was breaking my brain trying to figure out what actually happened. And there we go. Um, basically, I'd added another 16 inches of offset to what was already there. Um, this is my original G54, and I added a global shift of negative 16. Now, basically, how this happened is I wasn't paying attention and I entered the Z value um, I'm actually going to kind of scroll through here I needed the cursor down to G54 and not the global shift and I didn't and it caused an issue so I'm going to put a note on the machine to remind me of that in the future uh, you know you you learn by everything and uh, hopefully that won't happen again but luckily you know we're out you know a hundred bucks or so for a uh, face mill and some inserts I have the inserts, but I don't have the face mill body. Uh, hopefully that'll come in sometime next week, and uh, we'll get back to it. Um, like I say, I finished that part. Um, I have another option for face milling if I need to do anything next week, but um, pretty big uh, pretty big noise. 
we had a uh, servo overload error uh, so it basically caught caught most of the uh, damage before it got, in, got real serious uh, but that right there was the culprit thanks for watching the videos